Hello, mathletes. Today on this quite lovely day, we are going to spend some time graphing and ordering real numbers. But first, we also have to un understand what real numbers are. At a later time, we are going to identify properties of real numbers. But for now, let's get into the wonderful world of real numbers. So we are going to look at real numbers. The first thing is that instead of writing out the words real numbers, we can actually use a symbol. The symbol is kind of like an R with an extra leg. An R with an extra leg for real numbers. So I'm going to rotate my paper here and show you over here that this entire, all the boxes here that we are dealing with are my real numbers. And we'll break down the individual components, what each one of these subsets are. All right, natural numbers. The first one is called natural numbers. And natural numbers uses the symbol N with an extra little piece of the body there. Natural numbers refer to the counting numbers. One, two, three, four, etc., all the way to infinity. So where do those fit? Well, over here, they're the smallest subset here. Natural numbers. One, two, three, four, etc. And that's a two. Next, we have whole numbers, which as we can see, the whole numbers are the natural numbers, all of these, in addition to the number zero. So the symbol we use for that is n with a zero down below, kind of called n naught. So the whole numbers are the natural numbers plus zero. And of course, that is an outer subset here, not, and it includes the zero plus everything inside. Now our third subset is called the integers, and the integers are uses the letter Z, so very much like the N, just rotated Z. And clearly we can see what the integers are. They are, these are all my whole numbers right there. So they are the whole numbers plus the opposites plus their opposites. Now technically zero is its own opposite or doesn't have an opposite, however you would like. So, but each negative number, each negative integer is the opposite. And beware of this next term here because it sounds all academic. And it says, or additive inverse. You're gonna see this sign, or excuse me, this often, additive inverse. You're gonna see that in SATs and state tests or the additive inverse of a positive integer. So where does that fit? Well, it's the next category out. It is my Z for you Canadians there, which also includes the negatives, negative three, negative two, negative one, plus everything within there. Notice that it goes to negative infinity as well. Continuing on, the rational numbers and the symbol for rational numbers is a fancy Q. Are all numbers that can be written as a quotient. All numbers that can be written as a quotient of integers. So what do we mean by that? Well, each quotient must have a non-zero denominator, and some rational numbers can be written as a terminating decimal, and others can be written as a repeating decimal. So, for example, we have numbers like 7 over 5 and negative 4 fifths, and notice here that these ones terminate. In other words, 1.2 it stops no further. Now what else um, 
terminates would be, or repeats would be 0 0.3333 forever, so there's a repeating pattern. But numbers like pi do not count. So that means this fits over our Q, fits over here, and that could be pretty much any fraction. 3 halves, 2 thirds, negative 17 over 3, um, also repeating decimals or um, terminating decimals. And the last subset of numbers is called the irrational numbers. And although debatable, the Q is used with a, an apostrophe which reads Q prime. So irrational numbers are non-repeating, no patterned decimals. Decimals. So as we said, their decimal representations are neither repeating or ending, also known as terminating. So for example, if a positive rational number is not a perfect square, such as 25 or 4 ninths, then its square root is irrational. So as we look at just a quick pattern, we can see things like the square root of 1 is 1, so that's rational, and more specific, it's part of the whole numbers. Then radical 2 is going to be the square root of 2, and it is part of the irrational numbers. Radical 3 as well. Um, however, radical 4 brings us back to 2, which is going to be an integer. So, our irrational numbers fit over here in this category. And these can be numbers like pi, because pi, as we know, begins with 3.1415926, etc. But it never, never ends. Phi, which is approximately 1.618, also never repeats. But um, most radicals, so the square root of 2, the square root of 3. And of course, we can have the opposites here as well. Um, the opposite or negative radical 2 as well. So our subsets of the real numbers are my natural numbers, my whole numbers, my integers, my rational numbers, and over on the side, my irrational numbers. And again, these two are called mutually exclusive. They do not overlap. No overlap at all between rational and irrational numbers. So let's take a moment to graph these and see how things fit on number lines. So we're going to graph negative 3 fourths, radical 7, and 3.6 on the same number line in order to compare them. Now, of course, it's probably important for us to decimalize each one of these. So this one becomes negative 0 0.75. Then we have to plug this into a calculator to see what we get. So negative 3 fourths is between negative 1 and 0. So it's uh, somewhere in here. Negative 3 fourths. So we know it's pretty close to negative 1. Next, radical 7 is approximately 2.65. Of course, that keeps going. So we know that radical 7 is somewhere here between 2 and 3. So 2.6 would work there. And lastly, 3.6 is clearly right there. So now we can see uh, which one of these is the smallest, which one is the largest. And if we were asked to do a comparison, we could say negative 3 fourths is less than radical 7, which is less than 3.6. And lastly, let's compare negative 9 with negative radical 9, using the symbols greater than or less than. Since radical 9, or the square root of 9, is 3, so that means the opposite of that is negative 3. So we know that negative 9 is less than negative 3, so it follows that negative 9 is also less than the square root, the negative of square root 9. 
Now check your work over here and see how you do on these two problems.